Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we all doing today? It is the Sunday, the 26th of June, 2022. It occurred to me today, June is nearly over with. I can't believe it. It feels like, yeah, it will be. Half the year has just flown by. Anyway, um, what we're going to be discussing today is some of your gardening routines, just to find out how you go about doing your garden, et cetera, et cetera. We'll talk about that a little bit long later on. Before that, we'll go for what I've been up to over this last week. But first of all, have we got anybody out there? Yes, we have. Uh, so uh, where have we got? Bally Cillian is there. Good evening, Richard, and everyone, good evening to you. Uh, Adrian is joined. Good evening to you. Uh, lovely to see you. Uh, Oracle Arts Lomman is out there. Hello, Army. Hopefully, Stuart Jackson is back to himself. We all went thinking of him. You'll find out in the photo segment just how well he's getting on. Uh, Idaho Garden Girls out there. Good evening to you. Hargrave Gas. Good evening to you. Hope you've had a good week. Good evening to you. Philly SBB. Good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Uh, Turbo Stream is out there. Good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Uh, who else have we got? Anna Jones. Good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Stuart Jackson, the man of the hour. We were just talking about you. Evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Hope everyone is well and enjoying the garden. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I may have eaten two donuts for my tea. It's my birthday after all. Happy birthday to you, and I hope you enjoyed those um, uh, donuts. Have I missed? Uh, did I did I miss this one? Sorry. Hargrave Gas is out there. Evening, everyone. Hope you've had a good week. I think I said that one. Apologies, apologies. Uh, what else have we got? Who else have we got? Beatrice is out there. Good evening to you. Um, do, 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 just seeing if there's anybody I missed. Kate Spratt is out there. Good evening to Veg Army. Good evening to you. Ian McGorgan or McCraggan. I always get that name wrong. Good evening to you. And uh, my dad's out there as well. Good evening. Thanks for the rhubarb. All cooked into a crumble. You are most welcome. Rich Golden's joined. Good evening to you too. Well, it's lovely to see you all out there. And uh, I hope you ever had a good gardening week uh, Anis McGowan has joined just caught that just as we were getting into it good evening to you please um, please do keep your comments coming in it's great to hear what you've been up to over this last week what have I been up to over this last week we have had an interesting week here at TVGP HQ so where do I start where do I start I've been going down the allotment pretty much every night on the way home from work, just trying to crack on and get a few things done, bit of weeding, bit of watering, and it's paying off. It really is paying off. But one night, Roxy and my wife decided they would walk down and meet me on the allotment as well. And unfortunately, Roxy had an allergic reaction to a tick that we noticed while we were on the allotment. She basically, her, above her eye, swelled up. I was very, very panicked, as you can imagine. So I rushed her down to the vet. And thankfully, the vet said she's OK. Got a course of steroids that she's on at the moment. But uh, it's um, interesting. And it, I bring this up as it's related to garden. One, because I was on the allotment, obviously. But also councils and um, local areas. And I've been preaching about this quite a bit. They're letting the grass grow long, which is great for wildlife, great for habitat. But it does encourage ticks and we could get ticks ourselves and it's a possible way to catch Lyme disease. So think about that, if you will. Don't want that to be a negative, but it is something to think about. Uh, what else happened now? Slightly sadder news as well. Thursday, uh, I got a phone call around lunchtime uh, from my wife, who unfortunately informed me that one of my chickens had died. This was uh, Papa Don, my white chicken uh you probably see her sometimes in the opening scenes we don't know why she had died we think she had possibly eaten a cherry stone that got stuck in her throat um which is really really sad but worst of all and i've got a little picture of this this is bear who unfortunately was left on our own so we were a bit panicky about what to do with her here so what we came up with on friday uh, I was passing by, by a place that was selling chickens 
And we went off and brought two more chickens. Now, this is a great photo of the first one that we've called Hawkins. She's a, let's get a better picture. There you go. Very, very pretty bird. Um, uh, and she's a blue hawk variety. Uh, blue hay, sorry. Uh, very, very pretty. And we also got Gertie, Gertrude. Uh, another amber chicken, unfortunately not very well seen in these photos, but you get the idea. Uh, two new chickens have joined our flock, and now we've got to spend some time just getting these chickens used to each other. Bear can't mix with them at the moment because they've got to spend about two weeks getting used to each other, which is very, very upsetting. Um, but we got the, had to get the two chickens to keep Bear company, otherwise she was all on her own. Now, actual gardening. I mean, these two things, I, I feel that are, they are garden related. Uh, the chickens provide us with eggs, more importantly. But uh, we've, um, we, 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 what we've we been doing yesterday, my wife um, was out in the garden as well, and she started cutting down a lot of this, this climbers that come over from our neighbours, making so much compost material. It gets really big and takes all over the place. And the buddleia we have at the back of our garden, which we've just got rid Got, got get, trying to get rid of this buddleia. It just it's impossible to kill off this buddleia. It just grows so big. Um, but we were cutting that back. Uh, basically, we did watering, keeping on top of everything. At the moment, the garden and, uh, and what have you is really come together and looking good. Today, I did go down the allotment after opening up the chickens and seeing what's going on down there, and uh, basically I harvested my garlic. Got a good good crop of garlic i know a few people have been having trouble with garlic this year but and i put that down to the dry spring but i felt the strolch has really paid off what was there I was also harvesting a lot of our other um uh, crops with cherries so many cherries a man at the moment is making uh cherry scones that's because we've got about five kilos of cherries to use up raspberries we've got so many raspberries as well so we're using a lot of those things up as well got loganberries in the in the coming in soon blackberries as well in fact this thing i wanted to ask you guys actually this year it seems like blackberries are incredibly early incredibly early here we are in the june going into july and i can see blackberries are ready not not fruiting ready for picking seems incredibly early to, to me so over to you guys let me know what you have been up to in your own allotments and your own gardens let's have a quick look at the comments and see uh what is everyone else has been up to toby stream says i did some weeding at the plot harvested a few potatoes we are desperate for rain now here yeah we were meant to have a thunderstorm on thursday i think it was it never happened just never happened um uh turbo stream also says thanks everyone for the birthday wishes how many times you can celebrate a 21st birthday indeed indeed ian benos has joined good evening to you lovely to see you uh alison whelan hello everyone just back from a holiday in santorini you lucky person my garden has flourished under the care of my neighbor i've been harvesting strawberries raspberries cucumbers and peas fantastic sounds like you've been very, very busy. And I hope you had a good time in Santorini. I've never been there, but I know what the Greek islands are like. Uh, Belly Cillian, the only thing I could get done today between the heavy rain was to harvest some veg. Potatoes, swede, lettuce, scallions, rubbish, radish, ra rubbish, sorry, radish, cabbage and rhubarb. Also sweet pea flowers for the house. Fantastic. Good to get that, that good amount of crops and use coming in. Uh, Ian says, "Sorry for your loss, but good idea to get more chickens." See, it was um, it was a shame to lose Poppadom. She's been a very, very good chicken, a very good layer. But Bear, who's the oldest chicken, she's about seven years old, just couldn't be on her own. So we had to get a a bit of a company. The best, the weirdest thing about it, Poppadom was lying there, clearly passed away, and Roxy was barking at her to try and wake her up. It was really quite a a scene, scene, sight to see. Uh, so sorry for your loss, Ridge, and hope Re Roxy recovers quickly. Please give her a fuss from me. I will certainly do that. She does seem to have recovered. We just got to get these steroids. I don't like giving our animals steroids, but uh, it's what the 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 um, 
vet recommended. Uh, Turbo Stream says, Bally send the rain here. Ground is quite dry now. It is really dry, isn't it? It really is for us. Um, I'm hoping we're going to get some rain, but I'm not counting on it. Luckily, all my water butts are quite full. No blackberries around Stuart Jackson's area. That's a shame. That's a shame. Perhaps it's just here. I don't know. Uh, Turbo Stream, they like thunderstorm showers all day. I would love some of them. I absolutely love them some of them got a bit of rust on my leaks cherries i have got lots on clients trees and netted them has not had any in 15 years haven't seen rust on my leaks my garlic did suffer from it but it happens every year but cherries i can't say this year seems to be a really really good year for cherries i've not seen so many cherries on my tree uh, than I ever have done before. There's hundreds and hundreds. We've already got five kilos, and the birds aren't eating them either for some weird reason. We seem to be able to beat them before the birds. Uh, Toby Stream blackberries are only just in flower in Birmingham. That's weird. They seem to be, they are, I saw them today. They are ready for picking on my allotment. Uh, Digwell, did you see the red arrows? Yes, I did. Digwell messaged me earlier to say the uh, red arrows were flying past my way. Uh, about one o'clock and yes i looked out my bedroom window and there they were flying past better than that when my sister lives in her house she actually saw them flying around festival of speed and doing their act so very 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 nice to see the red arrows ian says my blackberries are just flowering and so far had six cherries the magpies have had more than that damn magpies damn magpies net them net them seems to be what people do to try and stop birds from eating your cherries i don't like netting them um just because i i feel it's a bit of a fuss a bit of an effort to try and then harvest the uh the cherries and on my old allotment i'll never forget this one day i wandered up to my old allotment and as i was walking in through the entrance i could hear this bird tweeting away and she was actually no i say she this bird was tangled up in the net that somebody had put over their trees and i had to cut the net away to let this poor little bird fly away uh, so that's why i'm not keen on using netting graham arnold says evening all good evening to you as does rebecca hawkins who says good evening sorry i'm late no problem to you at all uh Anna jones my blackberries aren't ready yet but were certainly flowering very early it makes sense thinking about it the the spring we had was very dry so perhaps that's why they are in an incredibly early season kate spratt says i've been down the allotment my god the weeds but some potato harvest and my black currants are good to pick and a lot of them yummy i've been putting strouch down around my lettuce and tomatoes it's fab stuff need to rain so much not just the plot but this pressure gives me migraines i i know how you feel there but yes strouch fantastic stuff any mulch will do i think i have become a big lover of using grass clippings and strouch particularly this year and it, it does go and really keep that soil nice and moist when i was harvesting my garlic earlier i noticed just how moist the, the ground beneath the strouch still was and that to me just goes to prove why it had to why we need it Turbo Stream saying, I planted up my second sowing of dwarf French beans on the plot, harvested a few onions and a couple of small beetroot. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Um, a lot of, lot, of, lot of work going on there. Also, good, to, good chance to get some second sowings of French beans in. Hargrave Guest says, no blackberries for me yet. Still flowering. We have strawberries, raspberries, blackcurrants and tabries. However, Tabry's gorgeous, just like our Loganberries and Tabry's as well. They are gorgeous and they are so tasty. Excuse me. Anne Wright says, wild blackberries just in flower in West Sussex. So perhaps, uh, obviously I'm in West Sussex as well. Um, uh, perhaps it's just my, my um, I guess it's a cultivated blackberry on my plot that is just an early blackberry. I don't know. They are just there. I should have taken a photo of them, not thinking about it, but I'll, uh, I'll do that in the future. I saw the Red Onion Arrows on the Festival of Speed YouTube show on Friday. Indeed, indeed. Uh, how how loads have load, had loads of rain in Cornwall, 
been potting courgette, butternut squash, and patty pan in 30 um, litre, filled with horse manure, topped off with mushroom, topped off with mushroom compost, I think that is, with perlite. Wow, busy, 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 but squashes, love squashes, absolutely love squashes. I've got to go get, I've got to get some more squashes in any plot pots that I can find. Uh, Ian says, have anyone ever had walnuts from a walnut tree as so creamy? Um, yes, Richard, I told my clients to check the net every day as I too hate knitting. Um, I have had walnuts from a walnut tree. They are delicious, aren't they? They're so much better or fresh, uh, but they are difficult to uh, to keep that freshness and difficult to grow walnuts, I find. Uh, you are correct, Richard. I've never had a cherry from my two trees, but won't knit in case birds get trapped. I think, you know, there are ways around it. There are, if you, your netting is tight, then in theory, your birds, the birds shouldn't get trapped. Um, but it's a lot of work, I find, just putting a net over a cherry tree to try and stop the birds from eating them. I generally find if you're quick and you're on it, you can beat the birds to the cherries if you're quick and you're keeping an eye on it. But um, these are all good things that we are here to discuss. Uh, not just Green Fingers UK blog. Uh, even in all late years, I've been picking loads of peas and raspberries. Lovely. So it sounds like peas and raspberries are in today, which is great to hear. Right. If you want to call in, the phone line is open 07307 135 174. Or you can zap in uh, on the link that is going up in the comments right now. Uh, if you're watching in the Facebook group, unfortunately, the way Facebook Facebook groups work, you may not see the comment, and I may not see who you are in the comments either. So, gardening routines. This is something I thought we might want to talk about tonight because I think I think a lot of us have routines that we don't even realize, and there's reasons behind it. So, for example, one of my easiest routines that I've come up with this year is on my way home from work, provided it's still light, and provided it's, it's dry, excuse me, uh, or the, it provided there's no reason that I've got to rush home. I find that spending 20 minutes, half hour on the alarm every night is just helping me get on top of all those weeds. And uh, when it comes to the weekend, when I can spend a bit more time on the allotment, they are out of the way. I can just concentrate on what needs doing. And this, for me, is a routine that I've got into, and it's really, really paying off. So has anybody got a similar routine? Uh, Turbo Stream says, I potted up three butternut squash seedlings that were on the sharing bench, too not grown them before love butternut squash absolutely love butternut squash um i'm, I'm growing so many squash plants this year because I, I think as a winter vegetable they are fantastic and they're easy to store but butternut squash oh i'm salivating at the thought of it goes really nice in curries uh digwell says that three messages on our allotment site whatsapp group about birds trapped in netting all of the nets were just loose and flapping around and exactly my point you know I, i've managed to get five kilos of cherries off my allotment this week you know that's pretty good going and i've been keeping an eye on them i don't think i've lost any to birds somehow i don't know how because normally when birds pick at them they leave the stone on the tree and i haven't seen that this year so i've somehow avoided the birds eating my cherries maybe through luck than anything or it may be because there's so many of them that they're getting the ones up higher above where i perhaps can't reach as easily and leaving the ones lower down for me just a theory i have there but loose netting just just don't do loose netting is my advice sorry i've got to keep taking a swig of drink every now and then just to keep my voice lubricated uh, Steve, hello, buddy. Evening, just back from a plot and a busy and enjoyable day. Steve, as you're fairly close to me, have you seen any blackberries that are ripe and ready for picking? Um, just interested to find out that if it's just this variety that I have on the allotment. Beatrice, I usually go to the lottie every morning in the sun, summer, usually there from 6 to 8 o'clock. Nice and cool enough 
to get jobs done at that time. That's a good, very good point. I usually use that time between six and eight. <laughs> I'm not a morning person, so I'm, I'm going to be um, I, I'm stretching the truth slightly here. My plan is I always try and get up early to try and get out in the garden, do the weeding and the watering before I go to work. Um, honestly, I, I try and do a bit of admin stuff as well. Honestly, I'm not a morning person, so it's a real struggle. So normally it's probably nearer half seven when I get out of bed, to be honest. But the plan is always to get up at six and get out into the garden and do something. Muddy Boots, hello all listening and whilst I am weeding. Um, uh, Dick, oh, hang on, I'll come, come back to that in a minute. Uh, Money Boots says oh, he's still on the allotment while weeding and listening. Lovely to see you, Nigel. Hope you are well. Um, Digwell says, My routine on the plot is the four R's repair, fix things, renew, replace plants, replenish top up beds, and compost, remove weeds, etc. Repair, renew, replenish, remove. So that's a that's a good good way to remember how a routine like that. Um, share us a bit more information in that dig well if you can in just how you attack this. The deserted plot next to me has cultivated blackberry bush. Lots of flowers, but no fruit yet. I'm keeping an eye on it. Perhaps it's just this one on the allotment then. Perhaps it's just this one on the allotment. Blackberries are usually not ready for picking until August in South Wales. See, I always remember um, somebody saying that the Blackberry Week, the um, half term in the autumn, is usually when blackberries were traditionally picked. But I always remember as a kid being on summer holidays, which I guess only a few weeks away now, uh, and being blackberries ready during our summer holidays. Again, I know I'm on the south coast, so perhaps things are a little early, but these just um, just work incredibly well. These blackberries just seem to be out incredibly early. My routine, I go up to the plot early in the morning each day. I have a hot drink first with my plot neighbours, then I water, deadhead flowers, plant any veg I need to, then harvest with breakfast in between. Morning is the best time to be at the plot as it is cooler and you don't get bitten by gnats, etc. then. Um, yeah, I mean, this is why I'm a big believer in uh, trying to use whatever time you have available. Um and trying to do it on a daily basis. It certainly does pay off. I love going out in the garden in the morning. Uh, usually Roxy joins me and does her thing, and then she'll run indoors and back to bed, and lucky girl. Uh, but 6 o'clock in the morning, and even later than that, there's nothing better than being on the alarm in that cool air, got to say. It does make a difference, especially if you have a greenhouse. It's good to get in a greenhouse before it gets warm. Time Extreme says, no real routine, but have to sit down when my back starts to twinge before it hurts. I think that's good advice, actually, for health and safety point of view. Trying to uh, make, make sure you don't push yourself too much and take regular breaks if you have a problem. Routine. Hurry to water in first. Walk around the plot to see what's what. Harvesting bits just before I'm ready to leave. Now, that actually brings me back onto something that I should also say. As I say, my first routine is I try and get down to the plots on a daily basis. But as soon as I'm on the plot, I do take a walk around just to make notes of anything that I can see that might need attention straight away, might be ready for harvesting, um, or anything, any damage that might happen. Uh, during the week, so I try and do just the weeding and watering during the week, so that at the weekend I haven't got worried, particularly with the, the weeding more than anything. Um, and I also try and do the harvesting before I leave as well, so that I can keep everything fresh and get it in the freezer much quicker. One definite routine from Turbo Stream is when in doubt, brew up. That's actually very good advice. If you are feeling a bit under the bit, bit struggling, not sure where to go, sit back. Have a nice cup of tea. It pays off. So Digwell says, as soon as I get that, I repair any structures, canes, netting, etc. No point letting the good get worse. I, yeah, yeah. So I get what you're saying there. I guess that's similar to my kind of rule of um, prioritising things that comes first. Anything that's dead or, sorry, anything that's going to die unless I take immediate action or damage like that, 
is always top of my priority. So yes, that makes a lot of sense. Depending on time of day, always very early in the morning, I'm normally leaving just as people and the hot sun is arriving. Yes, yes, yes. I've, I'm hoping, Steve, actually, we, I've got to pop over and see you one day soon, go to your allotment and your garden, because Steve has his own blog. I can't remember the name of it at the moment, but he's been sharing some really lovely photos, particularly of his home plot, which is looking really, really full. Cool. I suppose the routine is to tune into the Veg Grab podcast, but only when I'm in it. Yeah, he was, Thomas Stream was, as well as Nigel, was in the podcast that went out on Monday this week. Uh, weather report from Ian Beddoes. It's spitting up in Manchester. It's a bit of rain here, there. Kate says, the blackberry here just starting to flower in Nottingham. Routine-wise, I don't have one yet as it's my first season with an allotment, so working it out. What is best as I go along? Great to hear other people's routines and hope for next season I'll have a better idea of what I need to do. I think this is a great thing. You do learn, and I've learned a lot this year, actually, that just making that effort 20, 30 minutes is really helping keep my allotment on the tidy side. Dig well. Then I renew plants that I've picked on the last visit and replenish the beds with compost. There we go. So this this is his routine. And then the final one, I think we'll see what he comes up with in a moment. Oh, cool. My routine involves what Mallard wants done, regardless of what I think. That's the downside of have to share a plot with your significant other. Just in case a man is watching, I'm going to nod and agree. Digwell says, and I always remove weeds for five minutes before I leave the plot. That's an interesting routine there, Digwell. A very interesting routine indeed. And right, on our old allotment in South Sea, our cultivated blackberries that always came beginning of August, and they were huge and delicious. So what, what has happened with these blackberries on my allotment? Why are they out so early? Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Next one. Muddy Boots says, I'd like to recreate a to-do list. Don't necessarily completely jobs, but at least I know what should take priority. I'm a big lover of to-do lists. A very big lover of to-do lists. I've got them going all over the place. What I actually use to write my to-do lists, and I do this on a lot of, I use, uh, use these on a lot of things. Let me pull one up. Uh, I use a whiteboard. So, just because it's easy to, I keep them all over the place, take them to work, we keep them in the van, keep them in my bag, I, I plan podcasts out on them, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And to do this particularly, because the great thing is you write on it, when you finish your to do, finish that task, just wipe it off and it's gone. Um, just so easy. I'm a big fan of whiteboards, but pen and paper works just as well. Steve says, always welcome, Richard. Maybe one of the nice summer evenings. Indeed. I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch. I've just been so, as you can imagine, so busy with one thing or another. I keep, I should get in touch and pop over and see you. Uh, Jenny says, hello. Sorry, I'm late. Lovely to see you. Hope you are well. Uh, so just quickly, if you are enjoying this show, please do give us a like. Please do give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe or follow follow and don't forget to click the notification to know when we go live say that every week i know but i've got to keep saying it another chance for a swig of coffee just coming up uh on the bright side mallard not on youtube yeah i never know amanda tunes in from time to time and i never know what she's gonna do Beatrice says, I have a bullet list in my notes section on my phone and I tick them off as I get them done. Alas, the list never seems to get completed. Indeed, I know that feeling. Lists do just seem to build up and build up. But I always feel, and if anybody does write a to-do list, I always feel that by writing a to-do list, you just seem to be able to get your mental, mental planning into a better state and you just have a better idea, especially if you don't know where to start just one the to do list seems to prioritize things in your head and seems it seems to make things less of a struggle my routine is to water the greenhouse every morning before i go to work and then on blackberries as a child i pick them in the summer holidays as a group summer holidays so there we go i thought that was going to come 
Um, I do remember picking blackberries in the summer holiday, so interesting. My main routine from Ballycillion is to check what's nearly ready for harvest, make sure I have plants to replace them, then sow seeds to replace the plants. Yeah, so there's a lot of replacing plants that we're talking about and getting ready to, uh, what's it, consecutive sowing, I believe it's called. Swig of coffee just coming up. So when it comes to sowing seeds, actually, this is a, a routine that I have. I've set myself up and I call this my seed sowing situation is a bit like a production line. So I tend to sow, as many of you will know, I tend to sow my seeds um, into, let me just go and grab one of the trays to show you what I'm talking about. They're all here. I'll start them off, sow the seeds into there. Then when I prick them out, oh, sorry, I start them off in there. They go into heated propagators. Once they germinate, they move into another heated propagator, but under grow lights. And then I gradually move into another heated propagator that has the vents open, then to another one that has no lid on it at all, just to start getting them hardened off. Then I prick them out and they go into the greenhouse. And then once they start going outside, they go into my cold frame before finally getting used to going outside. Kind of a routine, but I think of it more as a production line, and it just seems to work quite nicely for me. Uh, da, 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 da. Hargrave Gas says, my only routine is I always leave things too long. Planting out, putting on, supporting beans, weeding, etc., etc. I think we're all guilty of that. Everyone is guilty of that. We leave things to the last minute. Um, and and just never have to uh or just ne always feel like we're behind i i see it a lot particularly in facebook groups people feeling they're behind when actually i think the season's just got going digwell says does anyone else add things to their to-do list after they have done them and then cross them excuse me or, or do is that just me um i think that's just you i think that is just you i don't do that but I think it's just you. We'll see if anybody else just adds things to their to-do list after they've done them to make the to-do list look like the more has been done. Toby Stream, I'm clearly disorganised there, not even organised with regular time day to go to the plot, never mind re-sowing seeds. I don't think it's about being a regular time slash or day. You know, think life gets in the way sometimes. You know, I could be stuck at work a bit late, so I can't go down to the allotment like that. It's not so much about being regular, but it does help. Beatrice, does anyone else count when watering? I count to 10, then move to the next section. Interesting. Interesting. I've not heard of this. I don't do that myself. But I tend to, because I grow in beds, I tend to work, I've worked out that one watering can full will water one bed. So I tend to just use that. Um, but I'm a bit sporadic in that I water the entire bed. Um, counting to 10. No, I'm not thought of that. Let's see if anybody else has anything like that when it comes to watering. Jenny says, my routine is to water in the morning and use that time to see what needs doing. Seeds need sowing. Depending on the weather and my mobility, I'll go from there. A list can get me stressed. Fair enough. If a list doesn't work for you, no point doing it. Um, but I do find that interesting. Again, routine is sometimes gives a bit of a, a rigid feeling, but I think a flexible routine pays off to be a lot better. Nicholas says, I added things after I've done them so I can give myself a pat on the back and also give me a reminder that it's something I've actually done. There you go, Digwell. You're not the only person. Nicola does it as well. Uh, Hargrave Gas. I count when watering, Beatrice. You're not alone. I've never heard of this. So it obviously is something people do quite often. Digwell says, I have a therapy session next week. No, nope, it sounds like you're not the only person, interestingly. Uh, Iron Man broccoli out tomorrow. Blanche and freeze, replaced with Brussels sprouts crisps. F1, there you go. Something's really well organised. Removing their broccoli um, and replaced with Brussels sprouts. Fantastic, fantastic. Muddy Boots also counts when watering the potato buckets with those with the hose pipe. 
Interesting. I mean, I can understand the logic of it. Make sure you get the same amount of water in each time. But yeah. Uh, Anne Wright says, I always keep a garden notebook. I jot down ideas when they come to mind, draw planting plans for veg plot and write to-do lists each year. It's a messy scribble work, but, but, but essential. I love a garden notebook. I really do love a good garden notebook. And I'm always, when I've had garden notebooks in the past, I'm always scribbling into them and making ideas. The trouble I have, um, I spend a lot of time driving. And that's usually when the great ideas pop into my head. But by the time I finish driving, I've forgotten what that great idea is. and Because I can't write it down. This is why I'm a big, big fan of the garden notebook. So I've got to come up with a way. I, I, I was thinking this the other day, getting like a, a voice recorder. I mean, I've got a voice recorder. I'm a podcaster. But getting one I can keep in a van and just record these ideas as soon as they come to me and then write them down at a later date. But, I, 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 you know, these notebooks, I, I haven't got any in here. I've brought so many over the years, um, and they, but I never have them on me when I need them. Uh, what else have we got? Beatrice is asking Muddy Boots how many seconds does he count when he's watering his potatoes in buckets? Uh, Nicola, my 60-day broccoli went to seed in the pots. I'm potting on from a seed tray, so I just eat as greens. That must be the Rab, the Rab 60 varieties. I always find they are incredibly quick to bolt those Rab 60. They're not really... They're, um, not really a broccoli in my eyes. They're more closely related to, I guess, purple sprouting broccoli is the closest thing. Um, but they don't get big. They get, but they do bolt really, really easily. What I find is uh, um, to keep on top of those, just got to harvest them as soon as you see them because they can bolt within days. I still grow those Rab 60 ones for that very same reason, funnily enough. Uh, Beatrice, it was the potatoes in buckets that got me started to do it. And uh, what Nigel says, I keep a notebook as a gardening diary and make a note of everything I do each day garden related. This could be weeding, seed sowing or harvesting. Well, in fact, Rebecca comes to this. Speaking to your phone in notes, it will save everything for you. So obviously with my podcast, I make notes while recording uh, which is my the diary sections that I talk about. Obviously, yes, I do record that with a microphone. Um, and that, that's kind of like my notebook, I guess. The trouble is with um, Rebecca's idea here, speaking into your phone in notes is a great idea, but when I'm driving, I can't touch my phone. So I'm going to come up. I think a dictaphone is going to be the only way around it. Just keep that in the van and <laughs> while driving, record into that like a, oh, well, I, some of those salesman people used to do and look like complete and utter idiots doing it but it works uh nicola also says use your phone for recording voice notes i can't do that while driving can't touch my phone while driving anna jones my routine is to alternate weeks a week of general gardening weeding hiring tidying etc then a week for specific job projects such as building structures digging things out i never mix the two that's an interesting idea i've never thought of that i tend to um prioritize weeding hoeing and tidying over everything else but i do like this idea of clearing specific projects on certain weeks that's that's a very interesting idea anna um does it work does it work for you more importantly time stream i even printed the garden focused personalized panner and i've only just remembered to look at it yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, Money Beat says 30 seconds for each 30 litre bucket. I think it was in reply to Beatrice who was asking. Uh, I normally use a watering can, but if I do use hoses, then I count how long it takes to fill the can. Then I count the number per watering can equivalent for each bucket. Like it's very, um, a lot of counting going on there. A lot of counting. You can ask, you can use Siri if you have Apple to command to make a note. Um, good point. That is a good point. I will have to look into that. I don't count when watering potatoes in 30 litre buckets. Just give me, just give them 10 litres of water. Excuse me. Sorry. 
sorry, it was a late night last night. Um, just 10 litres of water three times a week. That's good. That's good. I've got that swigger copy just coming up. Well, this is very, very interesting, all these uh, different ideas of gardening routines. Now, I do have uh, another gardening routine that I try and do. It's, it's related to weeding. So when I start weeding, I usually start at one corner of my allotment and work my way back. And what I then do is when I repeat, or what I, what, when it was a small plot, that's what I would do. And when I would come back, I would start in that same place. But because I'd done it the day before, I got a little bit further each day. It seemed to work nicely at keeping it in control. But now I've got quite a large allotment, and as well as the home plot. What I've done with the allotments is I've worked it out into four corners. And one day I will concentrate on one corner, the next day the next corner, and so on until I come all the way around. Uh, and the same with watering as well. I, I water the same areas as I've just weeded. Now, when I say weeding, I'm talking of rip weeds out by hand, not so much using a hoe. Um, let's see, let's see. Graham says, I don't count when watering potatoes in 30 litres buckets. Just give them 10 litres. I've read that one. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Steve, I like the idea of a notebook as a diary of jobs done. I plan a lot out in the computer, but I don't have a computer with me on the plot. A diary of jobs would be interesting to read back over time. Interesting idea there. Interesting idea coming up there. And um, yeah, yeah, especially you know when we when we become rich and famous from our gardening exploits and we've got these old notebooks that'll be worth a fortune. I think it'd be interesting to see what people look back in over the years and see what comes up. It'd be great to see some of the old Victorian gardeners' notebooks like this. I'm sure they would have kept them. Very sure they would have kept them. Uh, Nicholas says, I've just started setting up an irrigation system so I can do more jobs as it takes hours to water. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer in irrigation system. Best thing I ever did was set the irrigation system up in my greenhouse because it does take that a pressure off me i think i'll have to get some more of these drip water and irrigation system on the greenhouse on the allotment it would be great to put, put an irrigation system at home but also i think if you're planting trees or shrubs as well anything that takes a lot of established or to get established i think it's a good idea to set a irrigation system up before you plant out trees and things um just because like I say, life gets in the way sometimes, and a new tree that needs watering daily, it can be a bit of a struggle. Do much grow in containers, not in bed, not in beds. Don't much grow in containers, not in beds. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm sorry, Nicola. Can you um, rephrase that? I'm, I can't quite understand it's probably me uh i'm full of good intentions from beatrice to keep a garden notebook but i keep forgetting to do it didn't we once design a garden notebook perhaps that's something we'll have to revisit that what we would like in a garden notebook idaho says i tried to take pictures of all i've done then i can put in my notebook i like to compare dates from year to year i guess it's like kind of instagram as well it's a, a snapshot into how everyone's allotments and gardens look as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I love taking photos. love taking photos anyway. I've got several expensive cameras and spend a lot of time taking the photos, um, especially when you're fiddling around and making things look better. Uh, by the way, um, can I, I'll look back on the replay tonight anyway, but can anybody tell me if the image on, on tonight's live show is looking pretty sharp and pretty good compared to normal um i found a slight problem that i hopefully rectified ernie has joined a good sunny evening richard just back in from local wind pints pints lovely jubbly it got me craving a pint of cider now i don't drink normally but i do crave a pint of cider right now steve just been reading a book of diaries from old head gardeners from stately homes from the early 1900s to up to the 1950s very interesting love to read that book sometime now i do find the uh the, the old 
head gardeners to be a really interesting store um stories there uh due to most growing containers non ground so more watering needed gotcha yes of course anything in the garden anything in pots needs a lot more weeding than in the ground uh rebecca i love instagram as my diary it's great looking back yeah i mean i i don't spend enough time on instagram anymore uh, well i never really spent much time on instagram it's just another thing that i need to do but I, I do I do like looking back at some of my old photos that I have on my files on my computer and seeing just how far things have come. Saw a, a photo the other day of what the eleven looked like when I first took it on, and it's it's amazing how much changes. Alison says, I'm new to gardening and don't really have a routine. The first thing I do when I get home from work is to wander around the garden, see what needs doing. Hopefully next year I'll get a system. I think this is what I'm, we're trying to establish tonight. The systems and thing and routines that we have in place come from experience. And uh, I, as I said, I've really found this year that by um, hello Roxy, um, by going down the allotment on a, a daily basis and just getting on with weeding and watering is freeing up a lot of time at the weekend and the garden looks better for it i've always tried to do it in the past but this year i really have taken it on and i just feel like the weekends it's giving me more time uh to the point i mean amanda was arguing with me to give up the allotment the other day because uh of time constraints but i think we can avoid that i think we can avoid that uh good idea uh, by the way when i say arguing i don't mean she was shouting or anything it was a discussion we were having steve says good idea of course i write my blog up after each visit and add photos i'm sure i forget a lot of bits though yeah yeah I, like i say steve i can't remember your it's sunville dot sunflower dot mulville or something um i can't remember off the top of my head um his blog um i'm sure we'll post it in our facebook group if anybody wants to know uh, that's how and why I started on YouTube to keep a record for me. I think that's why a lot of people start blogs and YouTube channels to keep a record of how far they've come. Picture is much better. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. I've been wondering that. Um, yes, we designed a notebook, I think. I forgot to make a note of it from Turbo Stream. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's a very good picture tonight. Excellent. Um, picture looking good in Birmingham. Fantastic. Uh, image as well, they go pretty sharp too. Fantastic. This is what I've been waiting, trying to work out. Uh, looks amazing tonight. You look like you've had a fortnight in Barbados. My skin, if the sun comes out, my skin just goes this brown color. Um, I always get, have you been on holiday? I mean, it's no, it's just, I've been out in the sun. I'm very lucky like that, I'm told. I'm pleased, I'm pleased that the image is looking a lot better. I've been getting really annoyed with how poor the image quality is looking when I've got expensive cameras set up. What I discovered is I had it on my system set at 480p um, instead of uh, HD. And that's that's slight thing has made a difference. And I spent a bit of money on a new camera, which probably wasn't needed now. Uh, his time was from the NEC. Yeah, from the NEC, two days at the NEC. I always use a notebook, but I forget where I put it. So then I start another. I think I've got four books on the go at the moment. That's exactly the same thing I do. Exactly the same thing. I keep a bag packed now with my camera and my notebooks in, which does make it, it does help. But then I pull it out and forget to put everything back. Time story. Actually, one routine is to take photos of a plot. It's good to look back at them. You know what we should do? Perhaps we'll do this. It's a bit late in the year. We could do it. We could do it, actually. If everybody goes out and takes a picture of their plot once a week and come the end of year, we'll put it together as like a, a flip book type thing and see how everyone's allotment have progressed over these next six months. Yeah, we've got six months. We can do that. How does that sound? Everyone takes a picture once a week, save it, send them to me and we'll pro once a week might well, let's say once a month let's say once a month save them send them to me and we'll progress through them and see how they come together um i'll do that as well bally Celine, i think the most important thing to have in any system is just to leave time to just sit down and do my own work i agree with that i do agree with that it's very easy spend all this time trying to make your garden look good and don't sit down and enjoy it that's why i love barbecues 
have a great chance to have a barbecue um, while in the garden. Yep, Steve says, part of my routine is my flask with each coffee or in squash when it's hot like today. Then I just sit and watch things grow. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I totally agree. Kate says, I have an Instagram and love taking photos. Sometimes I'm very hard on myself and think I haven't done as much as I thought I would. Don't be hard on yourself. Um, I would, I, but then I look back on the photos from the start and realize I've done quite a lot. So it's quite motivational. And this is exactly my point. You know, we take these notes um, and see, um, see how far, take these notes and you can see just how far you've come and how much difference it makes it does when i've looked back on my old allotment or my allotment and how far we came it does make a lot of um, benefits to me uh ian says brown is a dirt from the little it's dirt from the little what little what little ha ha sorry um exacto mondo no point going to all that trouble if you can't appreciate and relax absolutely agree Great idea, Richard, with once a week photo. Let's do it. Yeah, once a week or once a month, whichever you feel is easiest for you. I like the idea of once a week, so I think we can do a good flip look, almost like a time lapse with it. Rebecca says, oh, I like it. Uh, Oracle says, I don't know how to send pictures, etc., Richard, or would show my Stuart Jackson up. Um, Oracle, if you email me, Richard, at the Veg Grab Podcast, we can try and sort something out to try and help you with that. Um, I think we can come up with something if we can find a way of doing it. Rebecca, Kate, I must follow you. I think we're in the same area. So, yes, if you've got an Instagram or anything like that, please feel free to advertise your Instagram channel in the Facebook group or in this live show, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, same if you've got a YouTube channel or TikTok or anything like that. I don't mind a bit of advertising as long as it's garden related um, and as, as well as, as long as you join in the conversation. Now, talking of which, um, all this talk on photos, we do have some photos that have sent in to us, uh, which I think would be a good chance to have a look at them. Now, Philly has sent in this photo. I particularly like the uh, potatoes growing in uh, tires on top of the shed. Great use of space in my eyes. Uh, Kate has got lots of luscious looking lettuce. Looks delicious, doesn't it, up there? I must say, I'm, I'm quite envious of all that lettuce. She's also harvested lots of delicious potatoes, which look absolutely delicious at this, with those sausages and beans or whatever it might be in the background coated in butter and black pepper delicious last week we spoke of a herb garden she sent me this photo last week but it was just slightly too late to get in the show um, again another idea for a beautiful herb garden this spiral Stuart Jackson we've all been worried about him we've all been asking he's back in the garden as you can see here just doing a bit of deadheading taking it easy but that smile on his face says it all. How happy does he look to be back in the garden? Very happy. Now, Anis, I've seen her in the chat tonight. She has been, um, she's shared this photo with lots of aubergines growing. Her first time growing aubergines, and I've got to say, looks absolutely fantastic. And they look really healthy. Almost, almost ready, I would say. They might be small, but I think they are almost ready. She's also harvested plenty of beautiful looking garlic, uh, such as this. Looks absolutely stunning, doesn't it? And fantastic to see. And in fact, this one, I'm really impressed with just how clean it looks and how, how tidy as well. I know a lot of people have been having trouble with garlic this year. I think this just goes to show how good it can be. Now, Kate, we mentioned earlier using Strolch. She couldn't find the Strolch as in the Strolch with the trade name Strolch, but she found this mulch from Miracle Grow and is giving it a go. Don't know if it's going to cause any problems or anybody has any experience using this particular mulch, but we're, we're hoping to find out after using it. 
Now, Ian Bellows, the final photo, he has actually learned what the drinks holder in your car is really for. It's for holding your plants so they don't fall over the place. Very, very important there. Very important. So please do keep sending your photos in and uh, we can share them. You can send them to me, Richard, at the uk via social media, either Facebook etc., or Instagram, etc., etc. Um, and if you want to send me a video, it's go to wetransfer.com. And again, my email address, mm. Richard at uk. By the way, the phone line is open if anybody does want to call in or if you want to zap in on the chat. The number is in the in, going up in the comments right now. Uh, so where are we going? Stuart Jackson, another routine is I post an Instagram picture from my garden every day. So this gives me a great thing to look back on. I've seen that. Yes, I see Stuart's pictures, daily pictures. Great idea. Very good idea. Annie Jones says potatoes look delicious, Kate. Fantastic. They really did look delicious. I think I've got to say the first early potatoes this year have been really tasty. I'm really pleased with how things have gone this year. Dave Ford, full water butts, happy days. Have you got rain there then, Dave? We haven't had rain here, apart from a little bit of spit. We haven't really had rain for a while. Kate says, my Instagram is short, short ass allotment less. We'd love to follow back. Great to get ideas and inspiration, plus being able to support each other. So please do go check out that Instagram. Like I say, if anybody does have an Instagram or YouTube channel, please feel free. But just join in the chat. Uh, Oracle says, what a picture. No matter how ill you are and depressed, there's no better place to be in the back garden. Brilliant to see Stuart Gat Jackson. That's made my week, mate. It made my week. It was his smile. The smile. It just goes to show how happy people can be when they're in the allotment in, or in the garden you know it's our happy space i always say you know i'm on the allotment and it just fills me up with so much joy i'm in my happy space there we go uh, nicholas says i harvested the rest of my blue salad potatoes yesterday and broad beans delicious delicious um yeah, yeah, broad beans, potatoes. It's all coming together. I mean, we've been harvesting rhubarb. We've, we've finished with the asparagus. We've got garlic. We've got onions. Uh, we've got uh, peas. We've got so many things coming in at the moment. It's, well, I'm going to turn on our third freezer soon and just keep that for my homegrown produce. But we're also, um, Amanda's getting busy making, like I said, cherry scones at the moment. When I finish this show, I'm rushing in to eat a cherry scone that she's made because, you know what? I can. Alison says, come to Wales. It's raining here. I would love to come to Wales. I will come to Wales one day, actually. And there's a few people I need to pop up and see. And Alison, you'll be one of them. Uh, Turbo Stream, one photo each week. Perhaps we should take it from the same position each week. That would be an ideal thing. You can take it from the same position, but I know it's easier said than done. Um, more rain now. Cat just came in with a wet coat from Nicola. It's still sunny and hot out there. Still sunny and hot out there. So, yeah. Is, that is what I'm thinking to Turbo. Yeah. Uh, I really need to harvest my rhubarb. Delicious. I harvested um, rhubarb. We get a lot of rhubarb, actually. In fact, uh, I harvested loads yesterday. My dad came over to help me with something. I gave him some rhubarb to take home. As uh, I think mentioned earlier, they've made a nice rhubarb crumble with it. Um, but what, every year we seem to get more rhubarb. But I've also noticed on the, my rhubarb leaves on the allotment, I'm getting little brown patches. I'm wondering if they're just getting a little bit too dry. I'm going to have to give them a good watering. Stuart, my Instagram is Stu Pot Allen. If you want to follow, thanks for all the kind words. It means so much. Plus, it's still very sunny here. Jenny says, I use organic straw sod for rabbits, etc. as a cheap mulch. Slugs love the cardboard too much. Now, I find that interesting. I used straw on the allotment as a mulch, uh, and it worked, except the weeds did grow through it, particularly the cooch grass. I think because the straw's quite not so densely packed, it worked its way through. The strolch, which is basically straw that's chopped up, worked better. 
but grass clippings also work better with keeping the uh, um, the, the cooch grass at bay. Uh, we have no rain again. Haven't had it for weeks, months. I know. I feel your pain, Rebecca. We, I can't remember last time it rained. We had a bit of rain, but not enough. Not enough. We need a good shower. Uh, we have plenty of rain in Cam Cumbria from Anis. Wow. I wish we had it down this way. Wish we had it down this way. It's roasting hot. I mean, we got a bit of a breeze today. We went for a walk earlier, and this um, breeze just came through, which uh, was nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, but rain, no. We were predicted, as I said the other day, Thursday, I think it was predicted a rainstorm and thunder and lightning, and it never happened. Uh, I was ne have never been so disappointed. But we're also hoping for good rain this year. This week, I think we're expecting a bit more rain. Uh, if it comes, fantastic. If it doesn't, damn, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Uh, oh, that's, uh, Anna Jones says, no rain in northeast either. It's still extremely dry here. So I think this is where I'm mulching. I've got into this another routine, actually. It falls quite nicely. And I run the grass with the lawnmower over the grass areas on my allotment and at home. And all of those grass clippings I use as a mulch to hold in some of that rain and keep that water in the ground. And I noticed it on the allotment said I harvested my garlic earlier and the ground beneath the garlic was still nice and moist and cool. Whereas where I haven't mulched, it's dry. It, it really is making a difference. That's why I'm a big, big, big fan of mulching not only does it help keep the weeds at bay it stores in some of that moisture and it says i just harvested some carrots there were some nice ones amongst some that had forked what causes this so right forked carrots can just become the the main reason or the usual suspect is that that carrot has hit a stone or something and that's caused that carrot to fork and the root to go in a different direction um but if you've added if you've dug in i'm going to say if you've dug in fresh manure or compost to your uh carrot bed that can also cause it to fork as well because it's sort of getting a pocket of moisture and then dry and so on and so on but the number one reason or if you're going to if you've got a, a, a carrot bed, the best thing to do is not add any compost or manure if you dig it. If you're a no digger like myself, just add the compost on the top. Make it a nice thick layer, thick enough that the carrots will get down and you tend to find you don't get any forked carrots. Number one reason is usually a stone has caused it or manure compost has been added. That And if you've added compost or manure, a year ago, it's fine. It takes a year for it to really work in. I've not explained that very well. Apologies. Uh, the straw and straw, which is quite finely chopped, so loads of sharp bits to deter slugs. Indeed, yes. That's what I found with the straw. Which it was quite finely chopped and some nice sharp bits. Hello, Roxy. Um, you're not going to come in, so I'm not going to open the door today. Uh, but she did come in. Did come in during the week, actually, when I was in here. Uh, Facebook user. Uh, this is somebody in the Facebook group. Uh, apologies if I don't know who you are, just the way Facebook works sometimes. I was really concerned with the heat in my polytunnel, my tomatoes, aubergines, etc., but also not being able to get to the plot much due to work. But it looks like the strolch has kept them moist. There you go. That says all you need to know about strolch. You know, adding that to your polytunnel, holding that moisture makes all the difference. It really does. Uh, you don't have to use strolch that is a, tr a trademark item I'm, I'm really impressed with strolch after using it for its first year this year not so good at suppressing weeds grass clipping seems to work better but holding on to that moisture does great and if it works in the polytunnel it'll work even better outside um, you can you can you can use large bales of chopped up rape seed straw horse bedding as mulch much cheaper than strolch. Uh, yeah, I guess you could run over it with a lawnmower to chop it up or something. <laughs> She's digging at something out there, Roxy is. Uh, sorry. Oh, it's Kate. No idea why I'm anonymous. I think if you're in a Facebook group and it comes up with that, if you go to the comments, there's some a thing you can press 
that allows StreamYard uh, permission to use your name. Might be just something to look at. I think I think Roxy out there has found a um, a flower pot that she's digging out and biting at. Uh, right. So, any more routines that people have gone into? Well, I'm trying to think of, of a routine that I have. I guess a routine that I do tend to do quite often. The first thing I do when I get to the allotment of, of the, after I've walked around is go into the greenhouse and water everything in the greenhouse and leave the door open for a bit as well. I try and do that first because I can just sort of tolerate the heat quickly. I'm in and out of it because it does get very, very warm in the greenhouse. Ideally, I would have the door open and shut, but I'm not there enough, so I tend to keep it closed all the time. Uh, I did think about, you know, those the the, uh, the window on the top that opens and closes with one of those uh, wax uh, openers i did think about getting those but then i worry if in the winter when it's windy and the sun's shining it might still open and rip it off uh it's chopped fine already oh, okay didn't know that did not know that um andrew says sorry i'm late very late no problem lovely to see you anyway and uh i just created the bed for carrots this spring with new compost so maybe it will be better next year yes there we go. I think we found the problem because you've used no new compost. If you if you've dug it in like um, the traditional way, then it's probably got pockets of compost here, there, and everywhere. If you've just popped the compost on top and made a thick layer of uh, compost as a mulch, then it is waving my hands around. Sorry, um, then it probably is. It, it, it'll possibly be okay. That's what I tend to do: is the no dig approach. Um, but I suspect it's the pockets of compost has caused it to fork. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know um, if anybody else has had problems and what they found has caused the issues and problems with uh, forked carrots, but that's certainly what I've found. Um, just yeah. So routines, 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 routines. I don't think I've got any more routines that I personally use. Um, and I've just realised I haven't even thought about the subject for next week. or made that up. Um, so I've got to get my thinking cap on for for next week, next week's idea. Anybody got a suggestion for a topic we could do or discuss next week? Uh, on tomorrow's podcast, I've got 10 gardening hacks to share with you all, if you're going to go and listen to that. Um it should, should be a, quite an interesting one. I think these are gardening hacks that I use and try and uh, uh, make my life a bit easier by using them. I believe in trying to make our life easier. I guess we could follow on that discussion next week. Uh, Rebecca says, sorry if I already mentioned this as I missed a start, but when I'm tired, I always set my timer for 15 minutes and literally work in the garden for just 15 minutes and then leave it till the next day. No, that's a good routine. That is a very good routine, actually, because it focuses you, I think. Anyway, this is the same as what I say about popping to the allotment on the way home from work. 20 minutes, half hour, and I'm focused on that because I've got to get on. I've only got that short amount of time. I'm usually hungry. I want to get home and get dinner on. Um, so just focusing by that. Uh, I missed a few minutes. My neighbour who shares my birthday has just presented me with a slice of birthday cake. That's my routine for after the show. Oh, if we'd known, we could have had birthday cake for the show. Um, I was going to say gardening hacks. Well, actually, we could do gardening hacks next week. Um, we could do gardening hacks. You share your gardening hacks with me. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do gardening hacks next week. That's gonna be, That's going to work. My regular routine is to drink beer and pee on the compost. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm a, I, yeah, yeah, I pee on the compost as well. And so does uh, Bob Flowerdew. He pees on everything, doesn't he? It was, stops people eating his raspberries, though, he says. Next week, can we show your plot in one photo to start us off? We could do that as well. Hacks and photos, yeah. So little rain here. My entire papi proprietus is on automatic sprinkler. If it wasn't, it would be nothing but dry. Property, sorry, is on automatic sprinkler. If it was, 
Well, if it wasn't, it would be nothing but dry dirt. Though it waters every day, I check the beds every day to see if I have to add more. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a very interesting point. I can imagine how dry it gets there in Idaho. Next week, how about pruning time and amount to cut, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, we can do pruning the week after. Um, it'd be summer pruning more, but we'll do pruning the week after because that's something it gets very, very difficult. Gardening hacks next week, week after pruning. I'll have to make a note of that. Two birds with one stone. Uh, gardening hacks saying, sounds great for next week. We'll do gardening hacks next week, then. I forget one of the beds weeded. I check every day to see if more weeds have emerged. I have 21 beds, so it takes a while. It does take a while, doesn't it? Uh, Kate says, at 4 foot 10, I'm not sure how I'll be able to pee in my compost bin. Might have to give that a miss. So, I, if anybody's, this is a good question, actually, just to, I mean, this is going to be a bit of a, might be a bit of a dirty question to ask at the end of the show. Uh, does anybody have an allotment toilet? I've left my camping toilet on the allotment now, and I use that when I need to go. And when it's done with, just um, pour that onto the compost bin, shall we say. Um our allotment doesn't have toilets on site, which is annoying because I could do with a toilet on site. My routine seems to be go out to the yard and don't come back in. Well, until I have to. Yeah, I know somebody just like that as well. Yeah, I do like going out in the garden. I do. I'm going mean, to spend more time in the garden than in the house, to be honest. Uh, I just remembered I started a bucket of comfrey tea last week. I need to get in the routine of watering with it. There you go. Feeding routines, that's a good one. How often do you feed your plants as a routine? Maybe in a few weeks, what are you harvesting? What are you growing? Yeah, okay. I, I, I haven't got anything to take these notes down. Um, if anybody is able to take a note of what I've suggested for the next, we've got three weeks, um, and email it to me, that would be great so I can remember. Oh, no, I found a pencil. I found a pencil, but I haven't got a I haven't got a bit of paper anywhere. Um, other than that, I'll have to watch through. So, yeah, gardening hacks next week, the week after pruning, and the week after that was, I've forgotten it already. Um, oh, what are you harvesting? What are you growing? Uh, and also photos for next week. And I think if we can get these this idea of, uh, hello, um, sorry, these photos that we can either take on a weekly or monthly basis and try and make a flip book type of thing uh, for December to show everyone how their guns have looked uh, throughout this last six months. Uh, Skinny Gingano has joined. All routines. I'd love to have a few of these. Always a bit hit and miss. Late to the party he is, as always. Lovely to see you, buddy. Um yeah, but routine. I mean, I've said all. I always say that routines work as a way of being organised, but life is not always organised. Uh, Nicola, even though I go at home, I still have a camping loo and a green poly tunnel as far from the house, and I don't need to take my boots off. Good idea, very good idea. We've talked about that in the uh, garden as well. Got to go, guys. Chat next week. Lovely to see you. Did well. All the best. I hope you did well at your show. I meant to ask her earlier. Tempestry, what dilution is best for comfrey tea then? Jam jar to a watering can. Yeah, I'd say I'd say a jam jar to a watering can is about right. You want it to look, the way I was described it, to look like weak tea. Beatrice, we have a portaloo on site in the summer months, but I've had bad memories of them from my younger days at Constance, concerts, so I won't use it. I've got to admit... In the days of old, especially on my old allotment where I'd spend all day there, a toilet on site was desperately needed. Now, I'm just sort of thinking perhaps not so much. Uh, by the well from there, not just Green Fingers UK blog. Apparently, women's pee isn't good for the compost, something to do with hormones. Our allotment toilets aren't very nice, so I bought a camping toilet from my shed. I have soap to wash my hands too. Very important. Very important. I use the um, <laughs> antibacterial stuff as well because, you know, it got very expensive at one point, didn't it? Usually one part tea to ten parts water at Turbo Stream, which is about right. A jam jar, or two jam jars, it depends on the size of the jam jar, I suppose. If it's a, a pound, that's about 
50 i don't know don't know don't know uh chimio dig well uh, i peed a bottle in my shed then add a bit of water and add it to the compost heap uh thanks andrew we'll get measuring yeah it's, uh, i think i always think going to the toilet and this is such a odd conversation isn't it it's not an odd conversation it's one of those secret conversations that everybody i think wants to to do something about but nobody ever discussed is how do you go toilet when you're on the allotment for me camping toilet all the way it's 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 pretty cool pretty oh it makes life easy very 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 easy i've got to say now something oh no roxy i'll be done in a minute just hold on she doesn't like it when i'm in here and she can't can't come and talk to me i know if i open the door she won't come in so i'm not going to try and do that i always get annoyed when i'm sort of distracted away from you guys uh by doing that uh what have we got andrew noise that's the measure i use for stinging nettle for tea at turbo stream it's probably like i say it's probably about a similar measure to what i use the compost wee for as well uh, i was yeah i was discussing no now have we finished the toilet discussion has anybody else got anything they want to add to that <laughs> um it's not not the nicest discussion i know i know but uh it's all good fun it's all good fun so uh what's everyone up to this week as well uh anybody's got any big plans i'm off on thursday with skinny jingana we're off up to the nec for a uh garden trade show i think is the way i call it I've chat to a few brands, talked about some products, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we might have some stuff to um, bring out from from that and see how it goes. Um, and then Friday, I've got a day off on Friday, so Andrew and I are going to do a lot of bits at home. Uh, and then Sunday, will be down on the allotment as well before I come live with for you guys. Going to go down the allotment every night this week, except Thursday because Thursday will be a long day, long day. Uh, what have we got here? Jim, I had to dig a cat's hole in the adjacent woods once years ago. Other than that, solids aren't an option. P is great, though. It is a, it is, it's a difficult conversation to have this, I've, I've got to say. But I do think some of the best allotment sites I've been to have had an allotment toilet on site. Because it's just so convenient. Just so convenient. Stuart says, I got more carrots, lettuce, and cow to sow this week. So hopefully I will have time after work. Are you back at work, Stuart? I hope you are taking it easy. I know you are out gardening and it's good to see you are gardening, but I hope you are still taking it easy. Um carrots, lettuce, and cow. There's still plenty of things to sow, isn't there? I've got to sow so many things actually i'm glad i finally sort of set my greenhouse at home up i've got tomatoes in there but i've set that up now as somewhere to grow my seedlings as opposed to in here this shed is pretty big don't get me wrong but since i changed it around it doesn't quite work in the same way and i was finding that i was struggling for space and i've got a lot of electronics as you can imagine in here a lot of wires all over the place uh, one day i will tidy this all up and and then end up getting a new studio um but uh yeah since i've set my my greenhouse up i've got put in there my potting bench and my shells for my seedlings it's working really nice i go in there i need to go in there early in the morning before it gets too hot of course or late in the evening i can work in there quite nicely just sowing a few seeds getting them into root trainers pricking out seeds and just making the most of it it's it's i love spending time in the uh greenhouse Stuart says, I'm going to try work and see how it goes, but only four weeks left of term. I must try. Well, just make sure you take it easy, Stuart, is all I'm saying. Um, but I know I think you're probably a bit like me, eager to get back into the garden, want to see how much damage the kids have done to the garden, whether they've looked after all the plants, uh, how much weeding they've done, etc. etc. For those that don't know why, why I'm talking about Stuart like this, Stuart works in a school and he teaches the kids gardening and it's a uh, quite an important thing in our eyes so we've got nine minutes left of the show um it's been a good chat today actually i've got to say it's been very very good chat 
uh, interesting to see everyone's ideas on routines and how people tackle certain tasks on their allotment. Uh, to-do lists seem like a, a, a quite an integral thing that we have. Um, uh, and as well as popping down regularly and off, little and often to tackle a lot. My allotment site is very old and have to praise the council last year. They put male, female and handicapped toilets in with electric for light and warm water for washing hands. Fantastic. That's what I would love our allotment to do. I don't know how they could do it, though. Getting... I say that. They've just done built new roads, so I'm sure they could have done it as part of a deal. So it could have been done. Uh, I'm hoping to build some new raised beds, but having tr but having trouble walking. I hope you're okay. I hope you're okay if you're having trouble walking. Um, you, I hope you're okay, Nicola. Um, go and get yourself checked out. Um, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Stuart, I will share photos of a children's shopping trolley gardens after the show please do i'll use them next week actually that would be really interesting to see oh and there's jenny just came in i have an outdoor loo known as the pondering shed camping sink in there for hand washing good idea very good idea actually a camping sink that's something else we could perhaps add to our allotment or even our home garden we've got plans for our home garden um Round a bit of a discussion about our home garden the other day. Our, our neighbours just over that side have just uh, had a huge, I want to say shed, it's it's not completed. So it's certainly an outdoor building. It looks stunning. And I think when it's finished, it's going to look even better. But it's given Amanda and I ideas of turning our entire back garden into a long shed with different rooms get rid of our summer house because we don't really use it and make a an actual gardening shed room um might cost a fortune might cost a fortune but i think it will be great to have a nice place at the end of a garden that we can just chill out and relax in as well as use it for gardening and making the most of our shows um and and possibly even a toilet at the end of a garden because you know our garden's so big that it's difficult to run to the to the toilet when we need it it's not it's not it's a man that's always wanted a, a, a second toilet in our house i don't know why i've always felt one toilet is always enough but she's always wanted a second one at the end of our garden for some weird reason some weird reason is all i have to say Oh, dearie me, dearie me. So it's all coming out tonight. These are discussions you probably didn't think we would have. At the point, actually, I, I did say this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, a like, uh, click the follow or uh, subscribe, depending on where you are, and click to get notifi notified every time we go live. We always go live at Sundays at 6 anyway, but I did think about doing some midweek ones at some point, as and when the time presents itself it may not happen but it would be nice if we could occasionally just turn the camera on and go live during the week as a bit of a impromptu thing nicholas says walking problems is linked to fractured ankles oh okay that explains a lot i hope you're okay and please do make sure you take it easy um it's amazing what you learn isn't it absolutely amazing what you learn i'm just realizing july july starts on thursday i can't six months of this year has flown by absolutely flown by it feels like only yesterday we were doing the uh the christmas quiz that we had did up in a, uh at christmas time um it doesn't seem that long away this season has just flown by and it's great it's great having a toilet at the end of gun are we in the 1960s we had an outside loo when i was a kid no, we're still not in the 1960s. We're still the 20 to 2020s. Um, it's just a man, a man that feels we need two toilets. I don't know why when there's only two of us that live here. And, and the toilet is a room on its own anyway. I'm mean, sorry, this is a real discussion. I, I can't believe we've gone down. And I didn't think we should. we would be having... Right, guys, I am going to start wrapping this up. We've got about four minutes to go, so I'm going to start summarising and clearing off for today. Um, 
Ido says, I know, I can't believe July is just a few days ago. Uh, I know, it does feel like it. And Tyro Stream says, losing day length now too, sadly. It's not noticeable at the moment. But as it comes in, I know August, it'll be dark by about nine o'clock. But it'll still be warm. And I always like those August evenings when it's warm and we can go outside, it's dark, and you feel that heat radiate off the walls. Those are the, the evenings that I like and are looking forward to as well. Barbecues, got to get the barbecue going. I haven't had a barbecue this year yet. I'm slacking. Bally soon says, next week's topic is going to be gardening hacks. So on the podcast tomorrow on Monday, this is the audio podcast, it goes out every Monday, I've got 10 hacks that I'm sharing with the audience, anybody that listens. Next week, I want to hear your gardening hacks. These are little things that you might do to make gardening life easier for you just things that you do that make things easier i'd love to see some photos about that even better videos anything like that as i say my email address is richard at the veg grower podcast.co.uk or you can find me on social media uh nicola is with amanda on more than one loo i don't know why don't know why uh Turbo stream says i like september got two weeks off in september i can't wait uh, nicola says i'll be having I'll be on the farm a year, beginning of July. Fantastic. Fantastic. A whole year. Uh, Beatrice says, defo need to lose. I don't know what I... Perhaps it's just a man thing. Perhaps it's just a man thing. I don't know. I've just never... I guess I've always only had the one toilet everywhere I've lived, and it's never been an issue. Uh, I will please to be pleased to lose the extreme heat. I don't think it's been extreme heat apart from a couple of days last last week when i was at uh, the nec gardeners world i think they were the only two days we've had extreme heat other than that i think it's been fairly mild uh, see you all next week off to eat my cake yum yum and yes i'm going to go and pack up and eat our cherry scones that amanda has been baking nicely it's going to have a mouthful of coffee like so next week's topic gardening hacks it's going to be a good conversation week after that I've forgotten already. Can anybody remember what it was and email me what the next two subjects were? Gardening hacks and also send your photos of your allotment or your garden to start off this um, thing that we're doing. Uh, Jenny says, just like my barbecue. Have a great evening, everyone. Good love you. No, everyone should have two loos. There you go. Uh, great chat tonight. Thanks, everyone. Um, and bye, Richard and all. No, thank you all. Gardening hacks next week. I'll try and remember what it was for the next two weeks. Um, thanks so much for joining me again tonight, as always. Please do check out the podcast when it comes out tomorrow. Um, and I'll see you again next Sunday at 6. Uh, I've just realised I haven't set myself up again to close off. There we go. Uh, well, right. You take care, guys. See you all again next time. <laughs>